Hello, UAE Grow Your Finances community. Where we discuss how to make your money work for you as opposed to the other way around and how best to grow your finances in the UAE. Here, we like to flip challenges around and create ideas, opportunities and possibilities so that we can all succeed together because there are enough seats for everyone at this table. How are you today, Russ? I am amazing. And we are sitting in our new townhouse on the border of Sharjah, Dubai. It's absolutely incredible, surrounded by greenery, nature, and I just feel inspired. Me too. This morning we went for a walk in the community and I have never seen anything like it, truly. I actually said to Ross, are we in England or the UAE? Because it's so green and so serene and peaceful and natural and beautiful. And there's so many animals and bugs and birds. and <laughs> But in the most incredible way. So we're feeling really grateful. Yeah, we're feeling like this is going to be a good, good experience. It's going to really change our life. And, and a good investment. This will lead to f- good financial decisions as well going forward because when you feel inspired you do lead to inspiration absolutely today's discussion topic is more of a story and it kind of leads off from last week's discussion topic but today's one is one of gratitude and inspiration in the same theme that we started off with because Last week, we spoke about our disaster with trying to get a bed and a sofa from a company who kind of screwed us over, to say it very nicely. This week, we have a story of a company that we dealt with who did the absolute opposite. And so it showed us that you really do have all types here in the UAE. And we're so happy that we had this experience. So should we kick off the story? Absolutely. Russ? Are you ready to make finance fun? Let's do it. In three, two, one, fun. Today's story is the story of the manifested mirror. Last week, we told you how our bed furniture store wanted to charge us thousands more than what they had it listed online for. And this week, well, let's get into the story and you can find out what happened. So we have a big blank white wall, a very big wide and tall wall that we needed to fill. And I was looking at artwork and we're very particular with our artwork. We always talk about how we love creativity and artistic expression and we wanted something big to go on the wall. And so artwork is extremely expensive. It's still something that we look at investing in. We want our art in our home to also be an investment. So I was thinking for now, maybe I'll put something else on the wall. Maybe I'll put a really big mirror or a really big window mirror. So it like looks like a window, but it's a mirror because that's in the theme of our home. We have big windows, we have lots of greenery and it faces the garden. So it would mirror the garden and the trees, which is great. We want to create a forest environment inside and bring the nature in. So I went online And I looked for these mirrors, very big window mirrors. And I found some options at stores that I really like. And they were also very expensive. Massive mirrors with a beautiful antique brass finish. Window mirrors. And this design is also very pricey if you want a quality item. So I decided to look at custom made. This is what we've been doing for everything. We've had almost everything in our home custom made. It's so much more reasonably priced and it comes out really, really good. If you find a good person to work with, it comes out really great, even better than the originals. So we've been really happy with that. So I decided to find a company who custom makes the mirrors and I come across this company and I said to them, how much is it for a custom made mirror of this size, this style? And they gave me the price. And I said, oh, it's actually cheaper online if I buy it now from this other store. And they said, no, we guarantee you that we have the cheapest price on the market for what you get. 
And so I said to him, no, actually, it is cheaper on this other site. And then he said, yes, probably because it's from this place. Okay, I don't want to say the name of the place, but it's like a big market of goods from China. Okay, a very, 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 very big buildings, buildings, many buildings of goods from China. And he said that it's most probably from there. And I said, no, no, this site, it's a very good site. I've bought from them before. They're very good quality. It's not from there. And he said, I'll tell you what, if you can find the same item or similar item online that is not supplied from this place, I will give you a 10% discount. So I went back to my site that I know is good quality. I took a screenshot of the item. I asked them, sorry, where are your items made? And they said, oh, we manufacture it ourselves here in the UAE. Took a screenshot and sent it to him on WhatsApp. I was talking to this business, this company that custom makes mirrors. And he said, oh, give me a minute. Give me a minute. And then I said, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for my 80% discount. And I kept bugging him (laughs) and he didn't really know what to say because I think he was quite stumped anyway to cut the story a little bit short I kept bugging him kept following up kept sending screenshots of what he promised me and said you promised you promised please make good on your promise 80% discount eventually he got so annoyed with me and I don't blame him that he said you know what go on our site select what you want say cash on delivery check out and send me your order number and I'll give it to you for free And I could not believe my ears. I was like, are you for real? Are you serious? They said, yes, you found one online that's not from the supplier that I said. It is actually, in fact, cheaper. So there we go. I'll make good on my promise. But even better, it's for free. I didn't believe it. I did exactly what he told me to. Sent him the order number. You will not believe a week later the item arrived and it is absolutely stunning. It is beautiful, magnificent. I love it. It looks perfect. And I cannot believe it. It's such good quality. What do you think of the item when you saw it? It's absolutely amazing. And uh, honestly, I did not think Kimberly had it in her uh, because I'm normally the haggler of the family. So I'm normally the one that gets the prices down. Kimberly is normally the one that finds good quality for reasonable price. And I'm always the one that gets the prices even lower. But I honestly did not know that she had it in her. But I'm looking at this mirror now and it's absolutely beautiful. And I'm still in shock that we got this absolutely free. Although you did put a lot of energy into this. I put a lot of energy. And time. And time is money. So we can look at it in that way. It was well-deserved time. Don't spend your life trying to do this for other suppliers in the UAE (laughs) because you're just going to waste your energy and it's going to destroy you. But this certain supplier really came through. And I'm saving your time by letting you know that this supplier, they are the cheapest on the market and they can actually make good on their promise with that, clearly, because they did actually give me a free item when I found something cheaper. I'm sure they're offering their product cheaper now. And it is already a very good price, I have to say, for the product that you get, especially. It's absolutely stunning. So very good quality, high quality. So Mirror Museum, guys, that's the place. Mirror Museum. Please don't try to haggle something for free for them. This is like a one-sort of thing. Of course, they're not going to be giving away free items to everyone. But if you are looking for a high-quality, custom-made mirror at a really good price, Mirror Museum is the place to go. And they are a genuine, authentic, honest business. And that is what we like to support here in the UAE. Local businesses that are ethical, and work on a basis of integrity. We would love to support businesses like this more here in the UAE. Yep. So that's a gem. Absolutely. I mean, keeping your promise. A lot of suppliers do not do that. And not only in the UAE, but all over the world. You know, it's very difficult to deal with suppliers, especially ones that you don't know, using for the first time. So they really came through this time. So we are very proud to know that there are suppliers like this in the world. And especially in the UAE. Another thing we are really proud of here in the UAE is young entrepreneurs and their incredible minds. We sought out a couple of young entrepreneurs who blew us away. Talene and her sister Jude. Talene is 19 years old and Jude is 15 years old. And they have done something quite remarkable. 
They spotted a gap in the market for something that they wanted themselves and they went ahead and they filled that gap. Applying knowledge that they have learned along the way and learning as they go, which is exactly what we always say, to get involved, to get the experience and just jump in and learn along the way, grow as you go. And Talene has some truly wise words about her journey so far. So we're very excited to share this interview with you. I came away from it feeling inspired. And what I kept having at the back of my mind is what Stephen Bartlett said about how he invests in people and he chooses his business that he invests in based on the people behind it and the minds behind it. And Talene stood out to me as somebody who I would personally invest in just because she has that spirit about her. She has that entrepreneur spirit. She has that go-getter attitude and she has that anything is possible energy and it was truly contagious and it really did inspire us even though the word inspired is overused these days we really did come out of it feeling inspired and then I want to say that her sister was actually at school she's only 15 years old so she was at school unfortunately for this interview so it was just with Talene but we look so forward to seeing what they do together what was your takeaway it was really inspirational. Honestly speaking, I have not met someone with such a brilliant business mind that is so young. And it was like being in a room with someone that I wish I was when I was 19 years old. I felt the same way. And that I definitely think that this interview will truly inspire all the youngsters that think that they are too young to start a business. I think any parents that are listening to the podcast today should definitely get all of their children around the podcast to listen as well. So they can also get inspired and they can also do something incredible because a lot of your youngsters have incredible ideas, but they feel that they are not adult enough to do them and it's never too late I think a message to take away from our upcoming interview with Talene is that there are no barriers or excuses or boundaries it's never too late you can always make a plan you can always get involved so are you ready to get into it Ross let's do it are you ready to make finance fun absolutely in three two one fun Welcome, Talene. So great to have you on our podcast. So who are you? Tell us a little bit more about who you are as a person and what have you started? So my name is Talene, obviously, and I'm a 19-year-old Jordanian who graduated high school recently and is hopefully going to the UK to study law in September. I have always had an interest in business and it's always been something that kind of enthralled me. And I ended up starting a small business earlier this year for customized photo magnets. I discovered you through Abu Dhabi Q&A. It's the group by Freya, who we've had on our podcast before. She created this group to connect the community in Abu Dhabi. And that's actually where I discovered you because your mum made a post on there telling us all about your business that you had started. And she said that the product is incredible and she wanted to know how she can help you boost to another level and if anybody has advice on business for you guys. So I got curious. I saw a lot of people were very interested in that post and there were a lot of replies to that post. And I realized that a lot of people are very inspired by young people starting businesses, especially here in the UAE where it can be quite daunting. You know, people think about the cost of things. Maybe it's going to be very costly to start a business. They think, where do I start? How do I find suppliers here in the UAE, et cetera, et cetera. Tell me, what gave you the confidence to start. So you had an idea and then you decided that you're actually going to take that step and start the business. And what made you choose what you chose? And who do you have on board with you in starting this? How did it all come about? Okay, so essentially, since about 2021, I've had a huge interest in business and investing in all of those things and entrepreneurship. It started with me investing in ETFs and stocks and cryptocurrency quite casually 
just because you know it was locked down there was kind of nothing to do and I decided same same that's <laughs> how we started <laughs> um and so I started off with some investing and it gave me just kind of a general finance and business background which I felt like really helped and then obviously in school I took business and I took theories so marketing theories all of those kinds of things so we got the idea essentially because we go on holiday quite often and when we go on holiday we take lots of photos we're quite a big family i've got three younger siblings and we noticed that these photos tend to get lost so we tried framing them but it was kind of inconvenient because they took up a lot of space it was difficult to hang all of those kinds of things so my mom had an idea she was like what if we went to like a photo studio and made them into magnets that we could hang up on the fridge because you know everyone goes to the fridge so we looked and looked and we couldn't find anyone in here in the UAE And we were like, oh, well, we've kind of just identified a gap in the market. And this is something that we want and we feel that other people might want as well. So that's when we started contacting suppliers. It was very casual at this point. We weren't really sure exactly what we were looking for. We we're still learning about all the machinery, all the things that we need, like how much one piece would cost. And then we found a supplier. We contacted the supplier. Same day the supplier contacts us back, answers all of our questions, and that same day we bought the machinery we were just honestly were really inspired by the uh, the fact that like this was something nobody had thought of doing in the UAE before and we also felt like it was really nice idea and it was very interactive because we were making them ourselves and the machinery wasn't that complicated to use and we could store it mostly in our home so it was very manageable yeah. so we initially bought a thousand pieces of raw materials enough to make a thousand magnets and we're in the process of ordering more wow yeah and then in the time period between ordering and then contacting suppliers and having the magnets come we worked out the logistics so we contacted a shipping company saw how much it would cost to ship to different emirates those kinds of things and then we also worked out like what price should we set and what are some realistic profit margins because obviously we know that customized photo magnets are kind of a luxury good and they're kind of a personalized gift and there's a huge market for those here it was just that this specifically didn't have a large market at the time like we could not find anyone but honestly there are a couple of people who had the same idea that we had around the same time that we did so mm. now we've got some competitors oh interesting okay so when you say we Who are you referring to? Ah, uh, yes. So essentially, my mom did this as a project for me and my sister. I'm 19 and she's 15. And she was like, this will be great to teach you more about managing your finances. And this could really be something, you know? That's amazing. Um, my mom and my dad both have been really, really huge support throughout all of this. You know, when we we did festivals and pop-up stands, they were always there. They were always visiting, you know, bringing family, taking photos and videos for our social media, giving us ideas for marketing. They've honestly been such a huge help. Amazing. And are they the ones who also have taught you how to go about it and to work out the profit margins and all of those things that you referred to earlier? So it's kind of been 50-50 because I also, I did business and There was a lot of calculations involved, gross profit margin, gearing ratio, all those kinds of things. So there was some part of that aspect that I did. And then obviously there was a lot of advice. They were like, you know, do this, don't do this, target this audience, don't target this audience. Whereas the logistics, we kind of worked out ourselves. So about the pop-up stands that you were talking about, is this something in the UAE or in Abu Dhabi that enables you to promote a new business? Is it a platform that helps you here in the UAE? It was essentially like a pop-up festival. It was mainly targeted at small businesses, but I did notice a few bigger businesses in there as well. But because of the affordability of the rent and those kinds of things, it was perfect for small businesses. So they actually reached out to us and they saw our social media and they were like, you know, we think that you do really well at this festival. And we looked at the feasibility of it and we thought, hey, this is a great idea to get some exposure, some brand awareness. And it was honestly such an amazing experience. We found that it was really reassuring in a way because we noticed that even the people working at the festival wanted to purchase our magnets and we did really really well honestly it was quite tiring because it was like six hours a day for three days and I've never worked full-time before nor has my sister so it it's was a good kickstart yeah 
it was really reassuring to know that there was actually demand for the product because I something I noticed is like when you're you've gone a few days without many orders you start to get like unmotivated and like you start to feel like oh maybe this isn't going to work and then going in real life and interacting with people and seeing on their faces how interested they are in your idea and how much they believe in you it's really motivating and it's really reassuring and all that truly matters is that you believe in you because if you believe in you other people will believe in you if you believe in your product and you are real with yourself along the way and you keep improving your product other people will get on board with it they will believe in you you know they'll see it in you and they will get on board so i have two questions firstly i wanted to ask about your 15 year old sister is she learning along the way or what role does she play in this and what kind of knowledge does she bring to the equation and to the business basically what are your different roles so we found that delegation of roles and responsibilities can be really useful but just note that we don't strictly adhere to these roles sometimes i'll do stuff that she usually does if she's busy and sometimes she'll do stuff i usually do for me i deal more with the logistics operations finance so things like contacting suppliers on a regular basis to get more stock i dictated pricing I also went to a couple different suppliers to look at packaging and how the product would actually look. Things like quality assurance, making sure all the magnets are up to par and if we need to change anything about our production process. Keeping track of inventory so that we know when we need to reorder more. And then also with that profit that we make from the business, what are we doing with that? Are we reinvesting it back into the business? Are we taking some of it for ourselves? Are we giving it some of it to my mom? Because she was the one who initially invested some capital into our business so that we could start. So that kind of allocation that's on me as well contacting potential investors and organizing meetings with investors that were interested so we did have a few people contacting us saying wow yeah that's amazing saying that they would like to like equity that kind of thing um they would work out the marketing all of that and it was just our idea essentially that they were using at the moment we are not accepting any like investors in the company just because there's kind of two reasons the first reason was that we kind of wanted to keep this a family owned thing to keep the authenticity because a lot of our customers are families who want pictures of their children that kind of thing and we also didn't want high barriers to entry and like a monopoly for the business we wanted everyone to have a fair chance and right now it is quite a small business and you know in the future we plan on expanding it a lot more so me and my mom were talking about this the other day and the world is leaning more and more towards personalization. So if you think about it, you know, in video games, like back in the early 2000s, everyone used to sit, play with one of the same five characters. But now you've, you, no one will play a video game like that. You've got to have personalization of your character and people will pay to be able to personalize their character. And that's kind of because of rapidly expanding population and a kind of a deep rooted desire for uniqueness and a sense of identity. So we think that like, rather than just photo magnets, like you can personalize your whole life essentially, so that it can be unique to you and only you, because that gives someone a feeling like of contemptness and like a strong sense of identity. Yes. That's a great thing that we need to talk about is bootstrapping, right? Uh, this is exactly what you're doing. Instead of taking on investors at the beginning stages of your business, when the value of the business is not worth what it will be in the future. You wait and you give it time. You suffer a little bit in the beginning to keep all the equity and all your cards to your, your chest. Exactly. I know that we ourselves have started a Amazon business before. We did it on our own uh, first and it didn't quite work because I didn't have the time. We didn't have the resources at that time. And we definitely see that when there's a gap in the market and when you believe that you have closed that gap in the market, there's always so much competition around. And when you do not sell for that day, that second day, that third day and that whole week, it does get demotivated. So I want to take us back to that point that you spoke about, because I think it will be so good for the other people out there that are trying to start businesses that do get demotivated during these times to push through. What is your advice for those people that are after one week of not getting a sale, they want to close down their business? What, what's your advice for them? Um, my advice is that it only takes one person to believe in you for you to be successful. So, for example, it took that one company to reach out to us and be like, hey, we want you on the pop-up stand. And we made a lot of profit from that. We gained a lot of brand awareness. They also had a lot of influencers at that event. 
And those influencers like recorded, they basically gave us a lot more exposure. So that was really helpful. It only took that one person, that one push to, you know, um, launch, you. launch yeah. us, yeah, and get us started, you know. And another thing I'd like to say is that a lot of people operate with businesses as their only option, if that makes sense. Like the biggest thing my parents have taught me is that you should never invest money you cannot afford to lose because not only is this very, very risky, but also you're operating very frugally with the expenses of the business, the quality, all of those kinds of things. And if you're really trying to differentiate yourself and have a unique selling point, that quality, that marketing, the quality of everything has to be top notch. So if you're not very like super afraid of losing the money, you're you're more willing to take risks. Like if we, for example, had taken out a loan for the business rather than getting capital from my parents, we m- maybe wouldn't have done the festival because it's extra expenses. And that way we wouldn't have gotten the exposure that we did. We didn't got, we wouldn't have gotten the sales that we did. So it's really important to have like a budget for the business that you are okay with losing. Like worst case scenario, it goes down to zero. So I think that's also equally important because it means that you're more proactive with it and less scared. And more creative. And more creative. That resonates so much with me because I went to film school and always the kids who had a big budget, sometimes their parents would give them a lot of money because we had to make a film every term, by the way. So sometimes their parents would give them a lot of money for equipment and things to use for their films. And it was always the films that had to come up with creative solutions, like putting the camera on a skateboard instead of having the equipment to move it around that made the most interesting pieces of art. And that was because they had to be creative. They had to think outside of the box. They had to come up with new ideas, new solutions. And that actually made them stand out. So... I completely agree with what you're saying. You have to come up with creative ways. You have to take every opportunity you have. You have to explore new avenues. And that is what's going to make you uniquely successful. I mean, already we've spoken about some very important points when it comes to starting a business. I would like to go back to being in business with your sister. Because for me, that's terrifying. (laughs) Because I have three brothers. So there's four boys in my family. And I think us going into business together we would probably try kill each other yeah me too my sister and i would never even consider going into business together we're on completely different pages so tell us more about that. yeah how do you keep in check and how do you make sure that those family fights here and there don't get involved and get stop the business from progressing So essentially, I think the biggest thing that we decided to do from the get-go was to play to our strengths. So I know my sister is much more of a social media marketing person. She's quite good at that. She always has been. And I'm much more of a technical person. So we played at our strengths so that the business could be the best it could possibly be. Another thing was actively separating the business from personal life. So even if we were in the middle of a fight, come on, we've got an order we, we got to make it, we, we got to make a video, we got, you know, that kind of thing. So it was kind of like, you know, how a lot of adults say, you know, separate your job from your family. Like it was that kind of thing where we just separated it completely. And I think it really helped to like have a consistent schedule. So like on Tuesdays, we're going to make a video. On Fridays, we're going to like pack up all our orders and then contact the shipping company. So having that kind of schedule and that kind of routine ensures that like, first of all, things don't get in the way. And then second of all, that even if something outside is going on, we're used to this. This happens every week and it's going to continue to happen. So it's all about consistency. So it's almost like also a mediator because if you're fighting, you have to come together and focus on the business. And then it kind of like breaks the ice and mediates the fight in a way. Yeah, honestly, like I'm not going to deny that I feel like it's made us closer. Oh, that's beautiful. I love that. Really, really good. And I think also in a lot of cultures, family owned businesses are a thing and it actually brings families together. I'm thinking about like sometimes a lot of it. There's some cultures that actually revolve around that, like Italian cultures and Spanish cultures. They have a lot of fam and Portuguese family owned businesses that bring the family together. Lebanese and they have a lot of different family owned businesses, just like the one in our area, that gentleman that we always see at the shop with his wife and his and. Uh, and his granddaughter, granddaughter um, packing the orders and it really is something very inspirational for for others out there especially people with big families and they don't re- really know what to do you know 
you have resources, you have people, you know, that love each other, support each other, and that can support each other through as something as difficult as starting a business. So, and it's fantastic because you can pass on the knowledge, like your mom's helping you out and you can help your kids out one day and you can help your siblings out, help each other out. So you keep it in the family. That's really fantastic. So you kind of like keep the education, the business education and the experience within the family. Um, but I wanted to ask you, what sort of timeline are we looking at from when you went on holiday, decided to start the business, found the supplier, had your stand, got the orders coming in? What timeline are we looking at there? Is it like a month, two months, three months? So essentially, we kind of had the idea in the back of our mind for a while because we weren't specifically looking at magnets. We were just thinking, um, so if you see that portrait over there, that's when we were in Turkey. Oh. And we took a couple of photos and then my dad had them on his phone and he was like, oh, I'd really love to like hang these up somewhere, keep them forever. You know what I mean? So um, beautiful Thank for you. the listeners. It's like by beautiful water and a hill, green hill with uh, homes on the hill. And then there's a picture of the mom and dad in the middle and then the children on the sides, different pictures of each child holding a beautiful, colorful parrot. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it really is something uh, amazing so you got a supplier to do this and were you thinking along the lines of uh yeah because we, like we were thinking like this was really difficult to find somebody who would do something like this and have it personalized to us and catered to what we wanted and so that's kind of when the idea came into play but honestly it wasn't really a great time sometimes it, you just have to keep in mind that you won't be able to put everything into the business if it's not the correct time so For around sure. the time that my exams started to end which was around the beginning of May that's when we really really started thinking about it and we started looking for ideas so we were looking online and my mom came across this girl making photo magnets she was like oh I'd love to order some and the shipping was like $60 she was like mm. okay let me look for this in the UAE or in the Middle East at least and we couldn't find anything and she was like well this is kind of a good idea and then she sent me on a mission to find some suppliers who would sell something like that so this was only within the span of about a week okay. we were just kind of working on it we didn't really have anything to do at the time it was kind of free because I'd, I'd finished my exams and so she sent me on a mission she's like research this see what we need contact suppliers and then come back to me with how much we're going to need to spend on everything if we're going to make this work and I came back to her with a price and I came back to her. This is what we're going to get. This is what we're going to get. This is what we're going to do. This is the shipping. This is, you know, all of that stuff. And she was like, okay. And then she, she swiped her card and we The started. dream child. We need one of those. <laughs> <laughs> there are so many things here in the UAE that I'm looking for. And I think that maybe I'm just quirky and weird but I can't find it over here. So I go on Etsy and I look on Etsy and it crosses my mind. Maybe I should just do it myself. But I feel that if we have entrepreneurial spirit here in the UAE instilled in us from a very young age, there will be these types of businesses and this type of creativity and innovation popping up, making money for the country and the individuals in the country. And I think that that is a beautiful thing. So the fact that you actually went ahead and took action is the difference there and it's so so important that people realize that they too can do the same i would like to add that actually abu dhabi is a great hub and it's actually getting bigger and bigger when it comes to entrepreneur and business startups the government has even started a massive i would say like fund to fund different small medium-sized businesses obviously taking a cut of their business but also giving them the support like our friend aaron that runs the business moment he's a South African that started an incredible business. We've done a podcast with him and Abu Dhabi government have brought him out here, have given him visa for I think two years, paid for his accommodation, all of this stuff just to start up his business in Abu Dhabi itself. So there definitely are places that are coming up with spaces like this in Abu Dhabi. I think Abu Dhabi is one to watch in the business space. Absolutely. I think it's it's soaring. It's had a boost recently and it's going to be a space to watch. And those people getting in now in Abu Dhabi in business and finding investment and situating themselves here are going to be very advantageous in the years to come. But I do think that we lose sight on really those small 
startups, you know, the small startups that don't have those maybe connections with the government or have a big business already started up and, and they call it a startup. We need to look more into those type of businesses and make them massive, you know, yeah. like your business. You know, there <laughs> yes. should be definitely a community where you can go to and you can speak to other individuals like yourself that have started a very small business that is growing and is doing really well. Do you have any resources like that? Are there any groups on Facebook? Are there any people that you can communicate with in this regard? So actually, when I went to the pop-up festival, I met a lot of different small businesses. And, you know, we follow each other on social media. We interact with each other's posts. It's just a little form of support. In terms of like actually forming business to business relationships, we do have a verbal contract with a studio in here in Abu Dhabi and essentially the way it works is that we gave her a few samples and she was like I love this and I want to include this as part of like a package in my studio so like you go in take a picture and you can get it on a fridge magnet and what I'll do is when I get an order I'll give you guys a call send you the photos and you can make it and we'll share the profits fantastic that's an amazing that's the way to do it 100 percent. and i mean if you go to a few of these photo studios uh, you can probably be the contact person when it comes to fridge magnets it's fantastic tell us about because we want to keep it realistic here we want people who want to start up businesses to be prepared for the work that's involved and when it comes their way not to be shocked and surprised or discouraged so tell us about the challenges that you've faced so far in starting up a business here in the UAE as a small business owner. Okay, so in a lot of these kind of fields that people usually start small businesses, there will always be someone who can do it for cheaper. Always. And yes. that means that you have to differentiate yourself in other ways. You have to differentiate yourself with your quality, with your attention to detail. Just these little things that can make you stand out. Can I just add their customer service? Because that's one thing that's really lacking in this country. We love the UAE, but customer service is so important and it seems to be overlooked everywhere. So that's another thing that can really help you to yeah. stand out and build that relationship with your customers. Because dealing with some of the suppliers in this country gives you gray hairs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to say the least. Yes. So you've basically as i was saying you've got to differentiate yourself in some way from other people who are doing the same thing for you as you but cheaper so for us that was mostly interactive like the interactions involved in our business so for example when we did the festival we brought our machinery with us and if there was any small children any young adults anyone who was interested essentially they got to make the magnets with us and we walked them through the process we told them our story all of those kinds of things and a, a lot of the people their first reaction when they saw the machine was wow i've never seen anything like that before so we made the experience memorable we made the experience fun interactive that kind of thing and then we try to do the same with our videos so they can physically see how the magnets are made and that it's completely like homemade there's just a little machine and a press and that's kind of what we're aiming at here what we're going for with our business to differentiate us because we know that there are probably high barriers to entry for the market and it's probably saturated with people doing very similar things but for us we're just trying to keep it authentic we're trying to stay true to ourselves and our values and obviously as you said customer service we try to be very kind and build good relationships with the customers so that they come back which they did a lot of people came on the first second and third day just to visit our store oh yeah yeah, so it's a family-run business for families, from your family to theirs. Exactly. I love that. So it's full of love yeah, and connection because people in this day and age are seeking connection. So you're filling a need there, consciously or unconsciously. You're filling that need for connection between people. So you have a lot of support in the community. How has your school played a role in educating you in terms of entrepreneurship and finance management and prepared you for the business world and as well as facilitated your passion for business, has it played any role or do you think that there are some improvements that can be made in the education system with regards to this? The impact that the school has had on me as an individual cannot be overstated. They were honestly amazing at 
building me up as a person. I had experience with public speaking, lots of interaction, hosting fairs, leadership skills, all of those things I got to build up at school. One thing that was lacking a little bit and that I felt needed some improvement was the focus on entrepreneurship and innovation and, you know, business in an applicable way, a way that's applicable to actual businesses and that you can use if you wanted to start your own business. And I actually, I did a pitch about this for my Academy of Excellence end of year final project. And I essentially was just talking about how I felt that there was a need to integrate financial literacy as a subject or biannual workshops or in any way implemented into the education system because I felt like it was really important not only to teach life skills and basics such as how to invest, how to budget, all of those kinds of things, but also how to be innovative, how to start your own business, those kinds of things. Because if 1% of the children that learn about financial literacy use it to start their own business, then the amount of entrepreneurs increases massively. Yeah, I actually just got cold shivers when you said that, because it will have such an impact. It truly would have such an impact. And I'm so happy to be meeting somebody like you who's advocating for that and who is somebody who is a young person who me as an older generation would love to pick your brain and work with you in the future and encourage this spirit within the country. I see a lot of potential and excitement in this area. Absolutely. And when you talk about school, I mean, for me, I hated every bit of school. <laughs> so I, I like this topic. I like to talk about it on the podcast. The problem, I think, when it comes to learning about business at school and learning about maths and uh, the way you calculate things, and there's not enough practicality when you talk about business, when you talk about how do you buy and sell, profit and loss. Let's refer to it in a business sense instead of referring to it as just like textbook style learning you know and this is what we have spoken to a few people and looking into how we can improve the mindsets of young learners anywhere from two years old three years old yeah. four years old the younger the better i think our two two year old boy has already watched quite a few episodes of dragon's den <laughs> <laughs> i like to think that he loves it and he enjoys it with me i highly doubt that <laughs> but uh, at least, you know, it's at some age, we are going to definitely try and get him on that business train. Because if you know how to run business in life, you will be very good financially. You know? And just financial literacy in general, because everybody needs that. Absolutely. Whether you love it or hate it. So when did you leave school? I graduated back in June. Okay, so this is something for all of our listeners to listen to and all those excuses they have about whether I should start a business. No, I don't have time or this or that. You know, we have someone on our podcast today that ended school in June and has already started a business. You know, it's something really inspirational for those listeners, yeah. you know, and it's definitely something where people need to understand. Yes. Okay. Everyone is busy. Everyone has their thing. We talk about it on our group a lot about side hustles. Everyone focuses on their salary job 100% and they don't really think about themselves. How do I invest in myself? How do I grow internally as well as how do I grow my financial income, you know, for my family, give them a better life. And we really love to talk about this. We love to promote it. We love to say side, you have to have at least one or two side hustles on the side when you do have time. And even when you don't have time. So what's your future for this business? I understand now you're definitely going to be studying secondary education, right? So how do you think you would be able to run the business on the side with your sister going to school, you going to college? How is this going to work? So essentially the main idea is that everything I do can be done remotely because it's all very technical. It's all very analysis based. So I run all the figures. I do all that kind of thing. As well as this, I have got another sister who's about 13, who's my mom's been desperate for us to include her a little bit more in it because then that way she can learn and she can kind of take the lead. My mom sees this as a learning experience for all of us, for the entire for sure. family. And she thinks that it's infinitely useful. And I agree with her. I agree with her too. <laughs> so the idea is that my sister sends me the inventory, weekly sales. We've got websites and stuff for that. 
and then I do some calculations. I contact the suppliers. I've got our address, obviously, and I can do all of that stuff remotely. But what will happen in terms of making the orders and that kind of thing is my 15 year old sister will really take charge on this one and she'll really start like taking that initiative to expand and grow and then if it becomes really successful then obviously there's the possibility of starting it in the UK as well because even though I'm going to be a college student I've still got some time on my hands and I think that you can always make time for things like this yeah 100 percent. I mean my brother actually he is very similar to your situation I mean he himself did tutoring you know you spoke about that before we started the podcast he also did printing on mugs and t-shirts and this was his start you know this was his stepping stone and he went on to building I think two or three businesses big businesses and he was a full-on entrepreneur so definitely your future is super bright it's amazing to see someone so young start something in especially the uae because it's quite expensive to start a business here and to go on to do good things there's something that i want to note that i'm picking up from you and that is that there's not an energy or a sense of desperation mindset. Your mindset is very much focused on the enjoyment of the experience and learning from it and taking it as a personal opportunity, as a lesson for growth. And I think that this is so important because there's a lot of people sitting around thinking, I want to get out of my job. I have to do something. I'm so desperate. I need to start a side hustle. I need to make more money. But you just went ahead and posted a video on social media that went viral for the enjoyment of it because it just came from your soul, I guess, and your passion and and something that you wanted to do. And I'm sensing the same with this business. So bring me into your mind about your perspective on the whole situation and, and what you're doing here. The way I see it, honestly, is that I am my biggest asset. So whether this business works, whether it doesn't work, what I've learned from starting this business is going to carry through with me for the rest of my life. Not all businesses succeed, not all businesses stay afloat forever, but the knowledge that you learn and the knowledge that you gain from trying is going to be something that for sure stays with you. So yeah, obviously it really, I kind of think I'm quite fortunate because I'm not investing my own money into this, but you know, even my mom has the same perspective. She thinks, you know, if this doesn't work, that's fine because the knowledge that we take from this and the experience that we take from this means that next time we can do it a little bit better. We can improve that 1% and then 1% and it adds up, you know, Um, absolutely like it's progress over perfection any day so as long as we are progressing in some way whether it's you know changing our packaging whether it's starting to ship internationally all of those things are required all of those steps have to be taken at some stage I think it's really important as well to not view your business almost as an escape and get too entranced in it because then you lose perspective you've got to have like a holistic view of like the world around you because then you can actually see sometimes people get so absorbed in the details that they forget the bigger picture so like how the market is those kinds of things and they start Mm. to get really frustrated when there's like a decline in sales because of an economic recession or something like that and they keep trying to fix it and investing more and more money and it's a very slippery slope from down there it's almost like gambling if you don't have a clear mind and like very like clear goal of what you want to achieve but then you can also look at what's around you maybe the timing isn't right maybe Mm -hmm. the location isn't right maybe the product isn't right maybe the product needs tweaking so you've got to be able to look and have a holistic and calm clear view of almost everything all the factors that could affect your business all the different stakeholders that could affect your business and the most important thing is to remain calm but take an active role panicking is going to be your worst enemy because then you start making silly decisions that could have a really dire impact on the way that your business functions it actually shuts off the frontal cortex of your brain which is your decision making area of your brain when you're panicking so it really does shut off your decision making progress over perfection i love that you said it so quickly but i really love that progress over perfection that's the way you look at things 
I'm honestly very taken aback that you are only 19 and with such knowledge in the business side. For me, when I was 19, I was very motivated, but I did not have all this business sense, you know. So it's really something incredible to have at such a young age. And I, I do personally think that you are going to go incredibly far in the business world. But like you said, you never stop learning. And I think it's also important to note that the support of parents is so important as parents ourselves now. And this is a message to the parents out there that your support for your children who might be interested in this area is really important because that's essentially what gave you the foundation to be able to take those steps. So it sounds like your mom is very tuned in to you and her daughters and what they want and need to do and, and their minds and the, your potential and that she actually follows through with facilitating to allow you to be able to take those steps which is very important and it's a beautiful thing it's honestly one of the best gifts you can give to your family so I love that and kudos to mum we want to definitely give your mum credit there because that's amazing and I'm going to keep that in mind as a mum. Where do you get your inspiration so your mom and dad is there some business side in their world? Where is this coming from? So my dad does own a civil engineering contracting business and he has had a few businesses in the past as well as investing in some businesses. I think the biggest thing, rather than taking away from the fact, oh, my dad started a business, it was all about being financially literate because my parents are, mashallah, very smart with the way that they invest their money. They splurge on certain things, they're frugal with certain things, but it's all the right things. So for example, they splurged on our education and educating us to be insightful and balanced and global thinkers and very innovative. And then when it comes to little things that don't really matter as much, they'll be a little bit more frugal and they'll use that excess money that they make to build their finances up. So investing in national bonds. My mom also invests quite casually with like small amounts of money that she can she can lose yeah. um, with like crypto and stocks and ETFs. And then I've got some money in long-term stocks that I'm using to build up my savings. So for when I get out of college and I need to start my life, essentially. Fantastic. Mashallah. <laughs> <laughs> so I've, I've tried my best to mirror that. And the way that I grew up was like, oh, you know, we've got land, we've got this, we've got all of these different, like Ross, what you were saying earlier about having at least one side hustle. They don't have to be, I don't think personally that they've got to be active. If you've got things building up interest over time, if you've got things building up in value over time, like real estate, obviously, if you can afford it, then that's just as good of a side hustle because the way my mom sees it is you've got to have revenue streams. They don't have to be sure. hustles. You don't have to be active but you are making income from certain things so every year my mom gets dividends from the national bonds that she's invested in and at any time she can just pull out and take it as cash yeah. so it's it's free money essentially yeah we're all about that passive investing lifestyle we're all about it and all about sitting on a foundation and a strong foundation something that you can basically okay i have my foundation set aside now I can think outside the box and I have some money to splurge on maybe running a business, maybe splurging on myself, getting my hair done, you know, doing investing this in a risky business that might take off. 100%. I mean, if you look at two years ago or four years ago before we started UAE Grow Your Finance, I would never ever invest in a startup business. I never ever invest in crypto. I never invest in, in the stock market because I, I was nervous about losing money. But now that we've built our foundation, you know, we just bought our first house. Now at least we can say, okay, whatever little extra money on the side that we earn on a monthly basis, we can put it into something that we believe will grow substantially in the future. And definitely looking at investing for our little baby boy. We've spoken about it. We haven't started, but we definitely will open some sort of account for him that when he turns 18, when he turns 20, he has that foundation and he can get straight into what he loves and what he wants to do. Yeah. And when we do that, we will talk about it. Absolutely. So for all of the young minds out there and maybe even older people who have jobs, who are thinking about getting into business, but they don't have the confidence yet to get started, or maybe they don't think that they have the resources or don't know where to start, don't know how to start. What advice do you have for them and what words of wisdom or inspiration do you have for them? 
The most important thing, I think, when starting your own business is feeling prepared because that way you can kind of tackle on obstacles feeling like you know what you're doing. Nobody will ever fully know what they're doing. It's a learning curve. It's going to take time. There's going to be an initiation period where you can feel like, I have no idea what's going on. But to make you feel as prepared as possible, the most important thing is researching the market, seeing if your idea, as amazing as it might be, is feasible. So seeing if your startup costs are going to be, if you're going to break even, when are you going to break even? How much profit are you going to make? How much of your time is this going to take? How much storage are you going to need to store your supplies if you're doing it in the secondary sector? Well, how, how much storing space do you need? All of these kinds of things, and maybe doing a feasibility study, things like that, all of these things are going to make sure that when you go into this, you are aware what the risks are. You are aware where you could go wrong, essentially. And that's going to stop you from making those mistakes that you would have if you didn't research it properly. So for example, you could see that there's a high barriers to entry somewhere specific. So if you make the mistake of setting your prices too high, then you're not going to get any sales. So by doing a lot of research beforehand and by you know writing it down, making sure it's there in front of you and that you've got it, you are able to avoid making the common mistakes that people make when starting a business. But mistakes aren't the end of the world. I know I've made plenty. We, we've all made plenty. They're actually important. Mistake they are important yeah. because you can't learn without them. Mm -hmm. So don't be afraid to fail mm -hmm. because when you fail, that should just motivate you to do better. You will never forget a mistake you made. You'll never do it again. Like yeah. you'll never, you'll never make the same mistake twice. Yeah. And so failure is a really, really important part of like growth, both personal and financial. Yeah. And when you say research, you mean anybody can do that. You're basically just going online, you're seeing what the competitors and what you want to do are doing, and you're gaining knowledge based on the current market out there. Because I feel like a lot of the time people use very big words when it comes to business talk. And actually, it's something that anybody can do. Anybody yeah. can go online, see what other people are doing, what other successful businesses in that area are doing, and then just establishing what you can do differently, what works for you, what will work in your situation, correct? Yeah, exactly. The information is really accessible to anyone who will look for it, essentially. And for us, what that meant was largely the marketing strategy that we looked into, and also what the market was like in terms of price so we didn't want to go really really above like the market price but we also understood that we obviously with economies of scale the bigger you grow the cheaper you can get things so for us it was a lot more expensive to produce these things on a smaller scale and ship them on a smaller scale so we had to be realistic because we did want to make some profit out of it right so looking at you know average gross profit margins for like your type of good looking at the demand is there a lot of demand for it like do you see posts online do you see a lot of different businesses doing it what kind of prices are they setting how's the economy in general doing are a lot of people spending money on luxury goods or are people becoming more reserved with their finances and their spending what is going to make them want to purchase your product especially if you see something online it's very difficult to trust because obviously we know that there's a lot of scammers a lot of scams what are you going to do to make your product look trustworthy are you going to post customer reviews are you going to go face to face and do pop-up festivals and something that i've heard and i'm in the process of doing right now is building strong business to business relationships because i believe that that is so important for expansion incredibly important like it cannot its importance cannot be overstated because that way you're going from selling to individuals to selling on a far larger scale and the level of expansion that you, you could be seeing is like huge so what we're doing personally is we're currently in the process of reaching out to schools and we're actually in the process of building a partnership with a few schools where essentially you know how you've got graduation photos to get their children's graduation photos on a magnet or for example in the classroom because the magnet can stick to anything with metal in it. To having the kids' pictures in the classroom on a magnet, those kinds of things, school photos, you know how you can get them on a mug, you can get them on a water bottle, you can get them on a magnet. So contacting those studios that provide for schools, where instead of getting like maybe three or four magnet orders a day, we'd be getting 500, 600, and that would like take us to a whole different level. So while selling to individuals is great at the beginning, you do want to get to a stage where you're partnering with other businesses, collaborating, 
building business to business relationships and going that extra mile to get those real big numbers and those those really huge sales and that cuts out so much work for you because you just have those orders coming in automatically large free numbers. marketing yeah free marketing that is just fantastic I love the way you think, and I think that you're opening up minds in this episode, truly. 100%. Because it's such a simple idea, a magnet, and there's so much that you can do with it. I am actually going to be placing an order, and we've been talking about that, and I haven't decided quite yet what I want to do with the order, but it's something to do with using the magnet in a totally different way. So it can also be used in so many different ways, so versatile. So I love that. So Maybe merch. Yeah, maybe merch for UAE, grow your finances. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we've had, we've actually had a few businesses place like 100, 200, orders for 100, 200 magnets as logos and mm -hmm. they would distribute them to their customers on random as like oh. a little gift and a little gesture. And then uh, something else that I don't feel like we've talked about enough this episode is like our target audience. The idea that we were thinking is that like, this is very stereotypical, but you know, a lot of moms do a lot of cooking and they're constantly opening the fridge. And what do moms love more than anything else in the world? Their children. That was, yep. <laughs> <laughs> that was our goal with this, that, you know, she could open the fridge and she could see like her little baby boy or her little baby girl. Yeah. So, so that it just, it just lifts moods, it boosts spirits, those kinds of things. Yeah. So it was more, yeah, it was, as you said before, it was a lot about like building that connection. Yeah. Actually, what I was thinking about is, before you even said that, is your child's artwork, like the artwork of a three-year-old or four-year-old, you don't want to stick that big thing on your, your wall, like in the living room or anything, but to put it on a little magnet on the fridge is cute. Like, that looks cool. That looks nice. It looks mm -hmm. nice we, and neat and organized. We've done that before, actually. Oh, wow. We have a lot of people sending us their little kids artwork and then we put it on a magnet and we oh, wow. also had another option when we did the pop-up festival where we bought some permanent markers we bought the special kind of paper that we used to make the magnets and these little kids could sit down they had all the colors in front of them and they could draw on the paper that we used to make the magnet so it was actually the exact artwork that they used rather than a printed version of it so it was like a diy make your own magnet oh. and then we'd get them involved with the manufacturing process so yeah. they've got a magnet that they've made all on their own that's an amazing activity, actually, for children. Yeah, and we had a lot of kids and uh, mothers just gonna, kind of leave their kids there for 10 minutes. They draw on it. They ended up making two or three of them. We'd make them with them. And they had this piece of art that they were really proud of. Aww. And that wasn't like, was going, going to get like ripped or damaged very easily. Yeah. And that they could just put on the fridge. And every time they see it, they're like, wow. That's amazing. That I love it. I really love it. So what is the future of this business? Or do you plan on going to other printing materials or is the target to be the leading magnet uh, making company? Well, I mean, for sure that we, we want to expand into other customizable things, because as I said before, personalization is, we believe personalization is the future. Like there is such a big demand for it and it's growing every single day. And I think I saw that when for my little sister's birthday, she wanted to buy some Robux so she could customize her Roblox avatar. She was like, oh, you know, I want to make it look like me. Um, people want things that represent them they represent yeah. their personality mm -hmm. their appearance what they stand for they want all of these things so this little girl who could have anything that she wanted she wanted to make her roblox avatar personal to her yeah and i was thinking like honestly over the years how much change have we seen in terms of how customizable things are yeah like you know you can get engravings on your phone you can get engravings on jewelry obviously on my sister's airpods she's got her name there yeah. you can put quotes all of these kinds of things so the world is leaning more and more towards customization in a world where kind of everyone acts the same everyone looks the same and you want to distinguish yourself as yeah. someone and you want to show your own unique personality so sure. that's why we're leaning towards more like expanding into other areas we know that there's a lot of people that already do this but we want to distinguish ourselves in the same way and have that unique selling point that we had with the magnets. Keep on the same idea, something you wouldn't really think of. Like when you think of customization, you think of, oh, I can get it on a t-shirt, a hat, on a water bottle maybe, or a mug. You wouldn't really think, oh, a fridge magnet. Like yeah. that's not really a thing. So we want to keep it unique. We want to keep it authentic, family owned as long as we can until we feel that we're ready to kind of hand it off a little bit. Yeah. And then we just want to continue with it. We've picked a target demographic and what, what could they want? There's, there's a lot of different things that you can do. Yeah. And the possibilities are endless, honestly. So it's all yeah. about 
choosing the right thing making sure you have the resources and just taking that risk and just going for it honestly yeah I believe that it will take you in the right direction authentically because the right opportunities will come to you and your customers will let you know what their demand is, what they're wanting. And I think that it will authentically take you there. Because even when I'm thinking about what I'm wanting to place an order for, I'm thinking about something that's a bit different to what you already do, you know. So I, I was thinking of doing a little puzzle because our child is two and he's low down obviously when he's walking so we can just put it on the bottom of the fridge and then he can rearrange the puzzle with the magnets on the fridge instead of because he's always biting his actual puzzle he's always chewing on them and losing the pieces and things so instead of having an actual puzzle he can have a magnet puzzle to you know figure out and it helps with his development his brain development so there are really truly so many things that you can do and I think that your customers will be bringing those demands to you as you go and there's so many things you can do in the space of children and development you know childhood development so it's really exciting and we'll definitely be following to see what you guys are going to be doing I am so invested right now emotionally <laughs> okay so what has been your proudest moment of the journey so far honestly I think there was probably two I can't really choose between them. I think the first one was on last minute of the last day of the stall, just looking around us and seeing how like how vibrant it was, how how many sales we had made essentially, and feeling so incredibly proud because when you're in that moment, you're kind of absorbed. We got to make them because it was just the two of us, right? And we would have like five or six customers at a time, and it was kind of like there was a lot of rush. I remember once for the entire six hours, I couldn't even drink water because I was just so busy wow. talking the entire time. So when it was done, there was just use. <sighs> And then after that, we could really reflect back on what happened. And we noticed we had so many repeating customers. People liked them. They wanted to come back. They wanted to order them again. Even th they wanted more photos as magnets. We had someone come in about 15 times wow. to order like varying amounts of magnets. And it was, it was so inspirational. We were so happy. And then my second proudest moment would be a few days after having our first investor reach out to us and be like, I'm really interested. Tell me more. I'll do everything. I'll do the marketing. I'll do I'll do everything. Even though we decided as a business not to go through with it because of a few contractual details, it was really nice to know that even though we believed in ourselves, other people believed in us too and saw our potential. The importance of networking and connecting with other people, other minds. I think in, in today's world, uh, we are so focused on our technology and we think that we can run our business only from our bedroom. We can. But without that human touch, without that connection with another human being that is also doing the same thing or one of your customers and talking face to face with them instead of talking online, it goes a long way. Yeah. And we learned that when we did our first UAE Grow Your Finances meetup. Yeah. We got to meet some of our members on a deeper level. We got to see them face to face. And the human interaction sometimes disappears in today's age with so much social media and everyone spending 50% of their time on social media. Yeah, but when those people have built their expertise individually and then they come together to put it together, that's where the magic truly happens. Yeah, so I think this is a big point for, for people to take away that you saying that one of your proudest moments is actually seeing face to face how many customers like your idea. You know, instead of seeing order by order online, you can see people saying, wow, I want this. That's amazing. You see their facial expressions. Yeah, and their body language. And you can really tell that they're super interested. Yeah. And actually, I think something that proved this is that investor that contacted us a few days after the event, he was actually there the entire time kind of scoping out the businesses. Okay. And he came and he placed a few orders. And I, I didn't know that it was going to lead to that. So I was interacting with him as I would interact with any other customer. Yeah. And I told him our story. I told him everything. And I just really felt like with all of the customers, I just really had that like deep soul, soul connection that you feel when you and somebody like f feel the same way about something. Like they yeah. are like, oh, this is so amazing because I want to put my family on here. I want to put my pets, all of these things that mean a lot to me. And I'm yeah. like, that was the idea. That was the purpose. Or someone is like, I want to get my child's artwork on this. I want my child to design their own. And they're just thinking on the same almost brain yeah. wave that we were thinking on, on the same like, 
you know you see that you're making an impact in the world the larger world around you rather than just having an idea and being passionate about it you see that that passion is shared and it's it's helping people and it's connecting people and it's larger than you and you're working on something that's actually bigger than you yeah so and going back to what Ross said earlier, it is different to like when you see numbers on a screen and you're saying, oh, I made this much sales this week to when you're seeing people line up in a queue and you're seeing people like everyone walking past is like taking a look. They're like, what's that? Yeah. They're like showing a lot of interest. You know, they're so excited about it. They've never seen anything like it before. Yeah. They all think it's very unique. Like we had people running different stands coming to our stand to like purchase from us. And you don't really see that a lot, to be honest, because everyone's kind of sticking to their own stand they want to promote themselves and something I feel like I should note was this was the second and third day mainly the first day was very quiet like there was really not a lot of people there was not a lot of sales but we had to persevere so we noticed that we would talk to a lot of customers and be like oh okay I'll think about it and then they'd leave but we wouldn't get discouraged we would continue speaking to them if they came by again and then they'd come by the next day and they would place an order So we were open to telling anyone and everyone about our business, which is what you should be doing as a small business owner. You want to get as much exposure as humanly possible. Like even if that person might not place an order, they might tell their friend about it who's like, oh my gosh, that's such a good idea for my business. Or that's such a good idea for me to take pictures with my family. Yeah, planting Um, the seeds. Exactly, planting the seeds everywhere and they'll grow from somewhere for sure. Yes. And so we actually had a lot of people contacting us because they got our number through someone from the event and they were like, oh, you know, my friend got these magnets and I absolutely love them. And then you're like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. And the really cool part is like whenever anyone goes in the kitchen and they say, oh my gosh, you've got like these magnets on. And they're like, where'd you get them? And then they can tell us and that, that way we get more exposure. So it's not like so it's something that's hidden, it's something that's kind yeah. of almost hidden in plain sight. So anyone who looks close enough will be able to see. Yeah. And it's almost like free marketing for us because we've gotten a couple orders that way, actually. Can we see the magnets? Of course you can, yeah. Um, Could you bring them here so I can get my our reaction in real time on the, the mic? You yeah, don't have to bring them all, just okay. one or two. <laughs> okay, for sure. <laughs> we want to see them. <laughs> um, so this one's my graduation photo with my best friend. And I actually gave her a copy of this so that it could be like matching almost. And then there's... Have that- no fear. Emirati Woman is here. So we actually did these in partnership for Emirati Women's Day. Oh, that's coming up, isn't it? It's the 28th of August. Oh, okay. So it was yesterday. Yeah, yesterday. Yeah, yesterday. So we designed our own logos and we kind of just put them on the magnets and we kind of sent them to a couple different companies and they distributed them. So that was really nice. So honestly, and then that's an album cover. One of those is an album cover. We had a lot, or not an album cover, sorry, a Spotify thing. We had a lot Uh. of people requesting album covers, their favorite songs. They wanted to put them on magnets so that they could keep them. Songs hold a lot of meaning to certain people. It's like certain songs, they associate them with life events. They associate them with with happy times, sad times, all of those things. So we had some people requesting album covers and then that's me and my mom and my little sister. So it's like family, you know? So it's just capturing those moments, you know? That's so cute. So we've got a ton on our fridge, but I just wanted to bring you guys a little mixture so that you could see the kind of stuff that we do. I love them. I was actually picturing them smaller, but they're a decent size. They're yeah. quite big. Were you picturing them smaller? No, I was picturing them exactly like that. Oh, really? <laughs> exactly like this? Yeah. Ah, okay. So it's a decent size. And when you look at it, you know exactly what you're looking at. Like it's actually the perfect size. And it's I very feel. clear, the pictures. So it's very really clear. good quality. Yeah, it was actually, it was a learning curve for us to figure out how to work the printer Mm. and how to set the settings so that the photos came out clear and not blurry, especially when you've got something kind of a little bit on the smaller side. You know, when you're printing a picture of that size, it's a lot easier to make it a better quality. And then obviously you've got to use a certain brand of paper, a type of paper. So finding the best brand of photo paper to use, it's like glossy photo paper that you've got to use. Finding the best brand, the correct thickness so that the magnets aren't like bulky, all of those kinds of things, those were a learning curve for us. Yeah, they're not at all bulky. They're like very flat. It, it looks incredible. Yes. And, and definitely at this moment, you should mention your name and where our listeners can find you guys. Of course. So we're Magnetize Me. So like you yourself can be magnetized. Yes. Um, and in the on- Middle East, M-E. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Yeah, that works too. <laughs> and then we're, we've got Instagram at the moment and we've got TikTok. 
and so our instagram is magnetize me underscore and then our tiktok magnetize me underscore was taken so it's oh. magnetize underscore me it okay. was it was a very it was a random account like it was just like zero followers interesting yeah amazing so we're gonna put those links down below in yeah, the podcast as well as on youtube so that people can find you and they can easily access your instagram as well as your tiktok and we've also got an email as well a professional email magnetize me uae at gmail.com fantastic magnetize me uae at gmail.com yeah. or right. you guys can just reach out to us and we can put you directly in contact yeah yes. of course and when we have our order made, we'll take a picture of it and share it on our Instagram and on our Facebook page. That would be we definitely will be watching the space. And I think everyone listening will probably also be watching the space because it's really a great inspirational story. And I can see you guys going huge from here. Thank you for sharing. And when you're looking for investors, contact us first, okay? Because <laughs> we like we like to invest in in small to medium sized businesses. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's our thing. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. This was honestly such an amazing experience. Just getting to share, like, and help people, you know, who might be in the same boat as I was six months ago, not really sure where to begin, having kind of some knowledge but really needing to work on it. It's honestly been such an amazing experience to do this. It's our honor. You've opened our minds and inspired us. So thank you. Thank and you. when you are a CEO one day in the near future of a massive business, give us a call. <laughs> of course. <laughs> what an incredible episode, Kimmy. And I am so, so excited we are going to give this to the world. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as we did. And I hope you felt her energy through the podcast. And once again, we'll leave all of her business details down below. So if you guys want to reach out to her and order some beautiful magnets, then please do as well as you can get in touch with us and we can put you in touch with them because we would love to help out these young entrepreneurs to make sure that they are a incredible success and their motivation and drive and inspiration keeps on growing. Thank you so much for listening. Don't forget, pay yourself first because you, you are, are worth it. it.